Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Spirit filled life. The Spirit filled life. We're also going to do something on the fruits of the Spirit. But we'll start with the Spirit filled life. Then maybe next Sunday we'll now look at the fruits of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Romans 15, verse 14 to 17. I will be reading from the New Living Translation, Romans 15 from verse 14. 14 said, I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. You know, we're going to do a lot of reading. You know, sometimes, yeah, we just come and, and so we need to have a Sunday that we just say, okay, today is just Bible reading. We just read scriptures just go over them, meditate on them. You know, sometimes when you are studying, you just come across the scriptures and you're like, wow, this thing is in the Bible, praise the Lord. And so for some of us that are too busy to, <laughs> to study on our own, we create a Sunday for us. We use two hours, we just read through scriptures. And so in this study too, we're going to read lots of scriptures. Some of the scriptures, we just read them and you just understand them, praise the Lord. So Paul was saying, he said, I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. And it's the same thing I want to say to us this morning, my brothers and sisters. (laughs) I know that you are full of goodness, right? Hello, are we full of goodness? Okay. That you are full of goodness. You know these things so well you can teach each other all about them. You know, sometimes when we come up here to teach, it's not like... We don't know them. Some of us know them. In fact, some of you can even preach better than I'm doing right now. If I give some of you the mic, wow, we'll, you will we'll see the talent. It's there. Praise the Lord. So and for some of us, we've been doing this. We've been teaching people. We know it. We can teach others. But Paul went on to say something. He said, even so, I have been bold enough to write about some of these points. And like I used to say, anytime I'm here, I will say it and I'll keep saying it. Everything is in God's word. And everything is in God's word. Every character is in God's word. If you read through scriptures, you will find yourself there. Whatever situation you are going through, if you go through scriptures, you will see there. Praise the Lord. God is so wise. And he has put everything in his word. And the Bible says some of these things are written for our admonition so that we can also learn from them. Some things are written to some certain people but it's also for us to learn from them, praise the Lord. And so whatever is in God's word, there is a lesson. And so Paul is saying, even to have been bold enough to write about some of these points, knowing that all you need is this reminder. (laughs) Yeah, we know some of these things, but sometimes it's like we seem to forget. So we need, like Pastor will always say, reputation is what? Hello, reputation is what? Safety. So sometimes we need to keep reminding ourselves of these things. And that is what what we want to do this morning. We want to remind ourselves of some certain things in God's word. Praise the Lord. For by God's grace, I am a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you Gentiles. I bring you the good news so that I might present you as an acceptable offering to God. Made holy by the Holy Spirit. Spirit by who? By the Holy Spirit. Present you acceptable to the Lord. An acceptable offering made holy by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want to discuss. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? You know, somebody quoted something. He said, every day can be an exciting adventure for the Christian who knows the reality of being filled with the Holy Spirit and who lives constantly, moment by moment, under his gracious direction. Your life will be full of excitement if only, if only your life is being directed by the Holy Spirit. In fact, if you have the Spirit of God in you, 
and you yield to the Holy Spirit, in fact, your life will be so perfect. It will, is it, your life will be so perfect. It doesn't mean that situations will not come, right? It will. But it will be perfect in the sense that the Spirit of the Lord will give you direction. The Spirit of the Lord will help you. He will show you the way out of every situation. Praise the Lord. A life of adventure, a life of excitement. If only we will live under the gracious direction of the Holy Spirit. And the question this morning is, are we filled with the Holy Spirit? We just sang this morning, oh, fill me up, fill me up. You know, we've been singing this song. We, in fact, we sing this song all the time. But sometimes we just sing it from our head. It doesn't come from our heart, and it's like we don't mean it. We don't even, some of us don't even care. That's why I'm saying this morning, it's a reminder to some of us how important the Spirit of the Lord is in our lives. Are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible tells us about three kinds of man. Three kinds of man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll do a lot of reading, so we'll try to be fast. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 11. I'll read very fast. And I, brethren, I'm reading from New King James, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom. You know, I like, I like the way Paul, Paul writes. I like the way he's, he's been sincere. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him cru crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with the persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Demonstration of the Spirit and of power. This is Paul talking. <laughs> Yeah, you can have all the wisdom. You can talk very well. You can speak all the English you want to speak. You can use all the tenses perfectly well. But what he's saying here is, it's the spirit. If the spirit is not behind it, it will be so empty that it won't have any effect on anybody's life. Praise the Lord. Not with the persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are matured, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I think pastor did something on this. Now, I, I could just go straight to the verse I want. But I want us to, you know, sometimes we should just read. We should read the whole verse. Hallelujah. To really understand why that particular verse we are looking at is being written. Yeah. Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God has a lot for us. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his, through his word, through his spirit. And that's why sometimes, eh, well, sometimes it's wrong to say, ah, I don't know. It's just like what pastor will always say, oh, I don't know tomorrow, oh, I don't know this, oh, I don't know that. The Bible said we can because who is revealing it to us? The Spirit. The Spirit will reveal the plans of God to us. So you can know the plan of God for your life. Praise the Lord. You can know the plan of God for your life because the Spirit of God will reveal it. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things Yes, the deep things of God. As we're reading these verses, I want you to be seeing the importance of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. The Spirit searches all things. <laughs> yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. 
So if you want to know the mind of God, <laughs> you need the spirit of God in you. Hallelujah. No man knows the mind of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. <laughs> you should know the things that have been freely given to you by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, <laughs> the natural man, this is where we are coming to now, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual, the spiritual man, <laughs> he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Because if you are in the spirit, your life will be perfect, praise the Lord. Even when you are going wrong, the spirit of the Lord will, will bring you back, praise the Lord. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. But we have the mind of Christ. The natural man and the spiritual man. And then the Bible talks about the carnal man. <laughs> I think that is in chapter 3. 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal <laughs> As to babes in Christ, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. Now, why? He said, For where there are envy, strife, and division among you, are you not carnal? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when you read scriptures, you just, yeah, it's, it's there. God is so, yeah. Where there are envy, strife, division. And Paul is asking, are you not carnal? And behaving like men, men. For when one say, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? So you, you see some of these little things we we just allow into our lives are just signs of carnality. Praise the Lord. Signs of carnality. So the natural man, so I, let me just run through this. I said the natural man has not received Christ. The natural man has not received Christ. Spiritual things are like foolishness to him. He has not received Christ. He is not yet born again. <laughs> and so as we are doing this series, you, you, you will now know where where you are. Are you a natural man? Are you the spiritual man? Are you the carnal man? Praise the Lord. The natural man has not received Christ. He is not born again. He is self-centered. His interests are directed by self. It's all about himself. His interests are directed by self, resulting in discord and frustration. And Christ is outside this life. You know, many times when we come to church, we, we just want to believe that everybody is born again, right? Hello? We just want to believe that everybody is born again. But is everybody born again? Is everybody born again? No. And that's why sometimes, yeah, I was having this discussion with, yeah, I think with pastor one time, and I was like, yeah, we agree. You know, sometimes we just come and say, oh, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But like I said one time, we are not all the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God has made that provision, but some of us have not yet stepped into that place of righteousness. Praise the Lord. And so when we sing some songs, to some of us, yeah, we can relate with the song. Why for some of us, yeah, we've been matured, we've gone beyond that song. Praise the Lord. The spiritual man, one who is directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
the Christ directed life. Self is yielding to Christ. Praise the Lord. The person is yielding to Christ. The interests are directed by God, resulting in harmony with God's plan. Your interests are directed with God. The spiritual man's interest is being directed by God, resulting in harmony with God's plan. And God is on the throne. In this life, God is the one that rules. Praise the Lord. So are you the spiritual man? Are you in this category? Is Christ ruling in your life? Is Christ on the throne? Then the carnal man. <laughs> the carnal man is one who has received Christ. Yes. One who has received Christ. But there is a but. You have received Christ, but there is a but there. But he lives in defeat because he's trying to live the Christian life in his own strength. That's the carnal man. You have received Christ. But you just discover that once in a while, <laughs> you are just going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Self is still on the throne in the life of a carnal man, just like that of the natural man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have the natural man, we have the spiritual man, and we have the carnal man. And what makes the difference is that in the life of the spiritual man, Christ is at the center of that life. Christ is directing that life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, when we get born again, hallelujah, when one gets born again, when you accept Jesus into your life, then you get filled with the Holy Ghost, right? Hello? How do you get filled with the Holy Ghost? When you get born again, when you accept the Lord into your life, you've become born again. You've now become a spiritual man. And then you are being filled with the Holy Ghost with an evidence of speaking in tongues. Praise the Lord. With an evidence of speaking. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. The Bible said, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak <laughs> with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who gave them utterance? Who gave them utterance? The Spirit, not a man. The Spirit gave them utterance. And that is where I have issues. Well, I might be wrong, but... <laughs> you know, sometimes when people get saved and they call them out, yeah, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to speak in tongues, come out and... You now discover that it's like... Man is trying to give them the tongues. It's the spirit that will give them the utterance to speak. See, when it happens, you, it's something that you will not be able to explain. Hello? Yeah, those of us that have had the experience, you understand. So it's not this one they are telling you, all right, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Start talking. Say, Ra. Say, Ra. <laughs> I need, uh, where did, uh, if we should, yeah, my, yeah, say, Ra. Say, Ba. Sarah, Seba, Sarah, Baraba, now join both of them. No, no. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not, it's not what a man can give to you. It's not. It's what the Spirit will give you. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit that gave them utterance. When you have it, you will know you have gotten it. Praise the Lord. When you have it, you will know. <laughs> I remember when I, when I received, in fact, you know, yeah, something happened, and somehow, somehow, my parents threw me. Let me use the word threw me <laughs> to Meduguri. But at the end of the day, like what Mr. Femi was saying on Wednesday, if you look at your life, how far you've come, you will, you will see God's hand in your life at every stages of your life. Praise the Lord. So sometimes, even when things happen and you just feel like, ah, life is not being fair, after many years, you will appreciate the fact that, yeah, this thing happened. Praise the Lord. When they took me to this boarding school, I was like, wow, what kind of school is this? I was, I was telling somebody, I said, you've not been to boarding school. If you've been to the boarding school, this one that our children are, are enjoying, they take them, you know. Hey, Jesus. 
<laughs> the boarding school I went to, there were no windows, no doors. And at night, and it's a female school, and most times at night, you will not hear somebody shout, and it's, you know, Hausa now, Meduguri. You hear somebody shouting, Why are you Allah? Why are you Allah? And all of us will start running. <laughs> and at the point, I was like, What kind of life is this? But looking back, that was where I had an encounter with the Lord. And I was thinking, I was like, if I had not gone to this school, well, maybe somehow I would have gotten born again, but I think God knew why he took me there. Praise the Lord. And I was in JS1. And they asked us, after message, they asked us if we want to give our lives to Jesus, if we want to accept Jesus. And we came out. <laughs> and you know, it's not this one now that you have to tell us, all eyes closed. If you want to give your life to Jesus, all eyes closed. You know, I don't... I don't know, you know, for us to be ashamed of the one who is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the almighty God, that you should be proud of that, yes, I have God in my life, but we are ashamed to come out and say, I've accepted the Lord. We are ashamed. Why? So we are waiting for them to say, all eyes close before we come out. No. Until you are yielding to the Lord, until you open up your heart, you can't be filled. And we came out, and then it was time for us to receive the gifts of the Spirit. And I will never forget this lady, Naomi Ezra. <laughs> she was also in, I think, SS1 also. And that is why I keep saying that our children are not too young to know the Lord. They are not too young to carry the power. <laughs> this girl was in SS1 or GS3, but she was filled. When I say filled with power, you will know because I experienced it. After praying, she now said we should just, we should line up. She wants to pray for us to, to receive the gift of tongues. And I will never forget the song. And after many years, that's why I'm telling you that if you have that experience, it's not something you can forget. It's not something you can forget. <laughs> I will never forget the song. After many years, Holy Ghost, do it again, do it again in my life. Open my eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. And you know, we came out with our hearts and our, in fact, we were just willing. And the moment she stood in front of me, <laughs> she did not even touch me. It's not rabba, 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 mm -mm. My tongue was set loose. When I say it was set loose, as in my tongue was going, da -da -da -da, and then tears was just pouring out of my eyes. And she went to the next person. And you will just feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's an awesome experience. Not an experience that you will fake. It's not something that you can forget. When you've gotten it, it will always be part of you. Praise the Lord. So when you get born again, you get filled with the Holy Ghost. And sometimes, why some of us have not really been filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues, most times it's out of fear. You know, sometimes some people come out and they're just scared. So they're just thieves. They're not opening up their hearts to receive it. Praise the Lord. But if only you open up your heart, <laughs> you will receive it. Praise the Lord you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Giving your life to Christ is not something we should be ashamed of. No. I know that sometimes we can just feel like, ah, people know me to be a good Christian. Ah, why should I come out now? These things happen, yes. After those years, is it that we've not had our up and downs? No, we've been there. We've gone up, we've come down. Many times we felt like dropping the Bible and moving on. But because we've yielded to the Spirit, he brought us back again to the fold. Praise the Lord. I remembered after that day, I now took pen and paper. Ah, I now wrote a letter. You know, it's not this one that we're just hiding. It's something that you would want to share. Hallelujah. It's an experience that you want to, you just want to let people know. Ah, have gotten the Lord. <laughs> and I wrote a letter. You know how we used to write those letters those days? And I said, dear family. I was writing to my family. They were in Kaduna. 
And I said, it gives me great pleasure <laughs> to write you this letter. You know, I will write letters those days. And then, after my introduction and greeting, and I said, now I want to go to the main point. <laughs> and I said, I am now born again. Ah! And I sent it home. And it was when I later got home, and they were now telling me, ah, my sister now gathered her friends. Ah, Mary is born again. Mary, they were not born again. But they were not happy that I'm born again. And the point is, if you are happy that I'm born again, so what stops you from getting born again? We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. The Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at pastormax.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.